Hey gang, what is up? It's Bobby. Guys, I'm so pumped that we are starting youth group this weekend. I am ecstatic, to say the least. Um, we're trying something a little bit new this year, and this video is just that. Um, instead of me giving you sermons every weekend or lessons or whatever you want to call it, uh, we are doing videos, and the bulk of the message is going to be for our, from our friends over at Orange. Um, I am really excited because they're going to be really good, and the content is excellent. Middle schoolers, this week we are starting a series called Break It Down. And that is all about reading and understanding the Word of God. Now, if you're like me, I have questions about reading and understanding the Word of God all the time. So this one is going to be super practical for us. And we're going to learn how to read our Bible better. Maybe not the best, but better. And gain a better understanding of what God's Word has for us and the implications that it uh, has on our lives. So, without any further ado, check this video out. You're going to love it. I love basketball. Actually, it's my favorite sport. And in my opinion, two of the best sounds in the entire world are the way sneakers squeak on a freshly cleaned basketball court. And the second best sound, the sound of nothing but net. So growing up, I wanted to be like my and if you don't get that, see, there used to be this Gatorade commercial that used to sing about being like Michael Jordan. Sometimes I dream, <laughs> wait, hold on. Sometimes I dream that he is me, like Mike. If I could be like, ooh, I wanna be like Mike. If you've never heard it, look it up. If I could be like, you see, I got to see Michael Jordan play in real life twice. One time, I remember when the Bulls were playing the Cavs in Cleveland and Jordan jumped so high to block a shot, he literally jumped over an NBA basketball player. It was insane. Watching Jordan play, whew, it was inspiring. He would literally take over an entire game and he could dunk like nobody else. And his fadeaway jumper, man, nobody could stop. It was insane. I wanted to play ball like he did. I wanted to handle the ball, dunk, which was never going to happen for me. And I wanted to shoot the fadeaway jumper like Jordan. So I worked at it. In fact, every week I would take one-on-one -on -one lessons from a retired NBA basketball player. And each week we would practice little parts of the bigger move. Hear me out. For example, since I wanted to learn how to shoot the fadeaway, I had to first learn how to shoot well. And to shoot well, I needed to break down and perfect the movements. I had to first learn how to dribble a ball. And then I had to learn how to plant my feet to prepare to shoot. I had to learn how to place my hands on the ball. And I had to learn how far to bend my knees. I had to learn where to set my eyes and how to follow through with the most beautiful gooseneck. Maybe you've had to break down a skill or concept before too. And maybe it wasn't basketball. Maybe it was learning to crochet. You had to figure out what the pattern instructions were telling you to do, how to hold the crochet needle, and how to move the yarn to make that pot holder for your mom. Or maybe it was when you learned to play a musical instrument like the piano. Unless you have some incredible natural talent and you can just sit down and play a song from the air. <laughs> you probably first had to start by learning how to read music. And then you have to like place your hands on the keyboard and your feet on the pedals and push the keys while push the pedals and not looking at your hands. I don't actually know how to play the piano, but I hope I did it justice. When we're learning how to do something like play an instrument or learn a new dance move, the best way to do it is to break it into simpler steps. And the same is true when it comes to really understanding something that may seem complicated or confusing at first glance, like cooking or video games or TikTok or the Bible. I don't know about you, but sometimes I find the Bible hard to read and understand. I've had to ask a lot of questions about this book, and I'm gonna guess you probably have some questions too. Maybe you have questions that sound something like, am I supposed to read the Bible? Or 
how am I supposed to read the Bible? Where should I start? Why does it use weird words that I don't understand? How is this book different than any other religious book? And why are there a bunch of books inside of one book? And why does the Bible not talk about certain topics? Or maybe your questions sound more like this. Does it matter if I read the Bible? Does it make me a better Christian if I read the Bible? Is everything in this book real? Why don't I feel close to God when I read the Bible? How do we know that this book is the right one? If the Bible was written so long ago, how does that help me with my life today? And do I have to read my Bible to believe in Jesus? Here's the thing. If you've ever wondered any of these questions, trust me, you are not alone. I've asked many of those exact same questions, and it's amazing that we can have a conversation like this, where we can be real about asking them. And while I've had a lot of the same questions that you may have had about the Bible, I also know that the Bible has given me a lot of answers. It's really helped me in my life. For example, when I learned that even when I feel far from God, like I don't feel him, I don't hear him, I feel really, really lonely, I've learned that God promises to never leave me no matter what, which is pretty wild to think about, but he promises in here to always be with me, which is pretty comforting. And honestly, I've needed to remember that a lot in my life. Another thing I learned, I don't actually have to do anything for God to love me. I don't have to win the game or be number one or do enough right things or enough kind things. All of that stuff is great and makes me more like him, but it doesn't make him love me more. He already loves me exactly like I am right now. Reading and learning that took a lot of pressure off me that I was putting on myself. Or when I read about how Jesus always hung out with people who weren't super popular. That inspired me to want to always make sure I notice and help others, especially those who maybe nobody notices. And because the Bible has impacted my life this way, I've learned not to just stop reading when I'm confused or lost or don't understand. And I don't want you to either. I've learned that the thing that helps me most is to stop when I'm confused and break it down. One of the people I've learned from the most is a guy named John. John was one of Jesus' closest followers. And when Jesus was alive on earth, John walked with him, talked with him, and listened to Jesus. And after Jesus died and came to life again, John decided to write down what he saw happen during Jesus' life and ministry so that we could read and learn about what Jesus was like one day too. John started writing about Jesus' life in a really unique way. See, there were other people who wrote about Jesus' life, and they focused mainly on what happened. But right out of the gate, John decided to write about why it happened. Check it out. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Remember that whole thing we said about the Bible being confusing? Well, this verse probably doesn't help that, does it? Believe it or not, this statement is actually a really big deal. And that's exactly why I want to share with you what I've learned about this verse. But first, let's break it down. Okay, here we go. John was a man who grew up in ancient Jewish culture, which was the same culture that Jesus grew up in. And because of that, John was taught the Old Testament, or Jewish scriptures as they're called, since the time he was a little boy. In that culture, God's word in the Jewish scriptures was really important. It was God's word that spoke the universe into existence. It was God's word that the Jewish people believed brought healing, rescue, and guidance to their ancestors. To John and the others in this culture, God's word was about so much more than just words. God's word represented everything about who God was. It was the reflection of God himself. John went on to say something really important about God's word. Let's read what he wrote. The word became human and made his home among us. So here, John explained that God's word, the very reflection and character of God himself, became human. In other words, John was saying that Jesus is God's word in human form. He is the very character and reflection of God now on earth as a human. And that's why some people would call Jesus the word. If you're like me, you might be thinking, that is both totally cool and weird. And by itself, it is. But remember, 
This is why we break it down, to help us understand the Bible beyond just what we see on the surface, to figure out what this means for you and me. John saying that Jesus is God's word in human form actually means something that could help us approach the Bible in a different way. According to John, if we wanna break down the Bible to what's most important, all we need to do is look at Jesus. He is God's word, the word of God himself come to life. Every verse, every story, every piece of instruction in the Bible should be read with Jesus in mind. John saying that Jesus is God's word in human form actually means something that could help us approach the Bible in a different way. According to John, if we wanna break down the Bible to what's most important, all we need to do is look at Jesus. He is God's word. The word of God himself come to life. Every verse, every story, every piece of instruction in the Bible should be read with Jesus in mind. In fact, the biggest job of the Bible is to point us to Jesus. And why does that matter so much? Because Jesus is the best and most perfect representation of God. And that wasn't only an idea John had. The apostle Paul wrote the same thing in a letter to the Colossians. Let's look at what Paul said. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. In other words, Jesus shows us exactly what God is like. The Bible points us to what God is like, and Jesus is the perfect representation of God. Which means, the point of the Bible is to get to know God better. And what the Bible tells us about Jesus helps us know God the best. Because Jesus is God's word lived out in everyday life. The way he treated others, the way he interacted with people, the habits he held on to, what and who he said were important, and the decisions he made are the perfect examples of a life lived according to God's plan. And they are examples of how God's word can be lived out in real life. Now. Let's be honest, this doesn't change the fact that the Bible can still be confusing. There are so many questions we can ask and that can make it hard to even understand where to begin reading it. The point of the Bible is to get to know God better. So why not start there? Remember what we said at the beginning of our conversation today? Sometimes the easiest way to understand something as a whole is to study a smaller part of it first. So my challenge to you is this, rather than try to grasp the entire Bible. Start with Jesus. After all, he's the point. You can start where we did today, the book of John. I want to encourage you to read it and get to know more about Jesus. As you read, ask yourself these questions to help you break down what you're reading. First, what does this teach me about God? When I look at Jesus' life, what does it show me about who God is? If Jesus is God in human form, then what do his words, actions, and examples show me about what God's like? Next, what does this teach me about myself? If Jesus' life is an example of how we should live, then what does that mean for me? How am I following his lead? Where am I struggling? What does Jesus' life teach me about myself? Finally, what does this teach me about how I treat others? Am I treating other people the way Jesus treated them? Am I treating everyone this way? Remember, the point of the Bible is to get to know God better. Trust me, this is a great place to start when it comes to reading the Bible. Does it explain every story? No. Does it make sense of everything that happened? No. Does it answer every question you have about every sentence in the book? No. Nope. But it does give you a great way to think about the Bible as a whole. You aren't alone in trying to read and understand the Bible. That's why it's so important to have people your age to process with. You're all trying to figure it out together. Your group is a place where you can ask questions, listen and share opinions, and talk through answers. I'd even suggest you take it one step further. I always find that it's helpful to talk to someone older and wiser about what I'm learning. So ask someone you trust for help understanding what you're reading and how you can start living out what you're learning. Now. As you head out, I want you to ask yourself this question. What's one thing the Bible's taught me about God?
Yo, 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 middle school. Uh, well, that was weird. Probably not my, my best video intro. Anyways, wasn't that video really awesome? Are you guys pumped about watching the rest of this series? Uh, three more weeks of this, you guys, and it's only going to get better from here. So I hope you guys will stay tuned in to what it, what we have here um, through Orange and Commonway Youth. I am super pumped to see you guys on Sunday night from 5 to 6.30. If you're a middle school boy, you're meeting at the Carter's house, you're hanging out with me. If you're a middle school girl, you're going to hang out with Katie Holdren at the Gernon's house. Guys, we are super pumped to see you and spend a little time with you guys. It's been way too long, and we are super, super excited. Um, also, just side note, I'm, I'm feeling very sticky. I don't know if you can see this or not, but uh, like right here, there's a little dark spot. And uh, I may or may not have spilled an entire bottle of Coke on me because it exploded when I took off the lid. I literally had beads of Coke dripping down my face. It was great. Uh, until it dried up. Smooth move. Anyway, looking forward to seeing you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you soon.